Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellyn, Illinois, and this video is part six of a continuing series of converting a game called Voxel slash Sokoban, depending on your frame of reference, and making it in Game Maker Studio 2, and then porting it over into our own custom C++ SFML engine. So you need parts four and parts five to make this thing work. I don't just give away my code, you have to follow along. So uh, go to those videos if you need it. Just as a reminder, oops, let me just yeah, just as a reminder of what we're trying to accomplish again. This is the game. You're just pushing blocks around. You can walk around and push blocks. The goal is to get the goals filled with blocks. We're running this in 720p resolution. We're doing this with 60 by 60 tile sets. And again, that that won't matter for this video. But what are we doing in this video? We are going to take a look at you know, as we're developing our engine today, right now we're going to develop a keyboard class and a mouse class, our input classes, so that we can uh, continue forth. This video will handle input, and then next time around we'll actually make it so we can put some objects in our scene and actually give them, you know, move them around a little bit there, here and there. Okay, so I already have my project 5 done or part 5 done and so today all we're going to play with is sfmlgame.cpp and all we're going to play with is this run loop very briefly and then we're going to create singleton classes for the keyboard and the mouse so let me get started let me just set up the sfml keyboard we'll do the keyboard first not that mouse is any harder but there's a few little extra details and if you understand how the keyboard works you basically understand how you can make the mouse work as well so sfml uh, class sfml keyboard and again we're going to follow the singleton model so we have our public section we have our private section and i'll add a few more stuff here i'm staring at the, the real stuff just to have a fallback so i'm going to need a pointer to a keyboard object which is my static Set a keyboard pointer instance. All right, fair enough. Okay, and then I'm going to need a private constructor. Just no parameters at all. I've got my static pointer for that. I'm also then going to need a static uh, function for get instance. Okay, so that fulfills the static portion of this. So let me just go ahead and just get that .cpp file going. Okay, all right. I gotta, oops, I gotta find a way to turn that off. Or save. I don't like that window in window, but I'm old and set in my ways, so whatever. Okay, so my get instance function, remember, oh, and we also need to set up the singleton itself. So let me just go steal this guy. SFML keyboard pointer, SFML keyboard colon colon instance equals null pointer to start. And so remember how this goes. If instance equals null pointer, then we will set up and say instance equals new SFML keyboard. And we'll fix that up, of course. And then either way, I want to return instance. Okay, so oops, make sure IntelliSense helps us out. Okay, good. So that is the basics here for just getting the singleton part of the pattern put together. Uh, instance, keyboard, and we'll fix this. Uh, we'll have to fix up the... Oh yeah, we have this to go to. Let me fix that up. Uh, quick signature. Oops. Why isn't that... Did I spell it wrong? No. Why isn't that coming up green? Did I spell it wrong? Let me just try it out real fast. Did I spell it wrong? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, anyway, so we'll need that. Hmm. What did I do wrong this time, right? Nothing, apparently. Maybe IntelliSense. I've been having IntelliSense problems with other videos I've been making today, so maybe that's all there is to it. So we will fill this in in a minute or two. The, you know, we actually will fill in this portion right here right now. Or not right this moment. But um, so now the idea is like, what do we need on top of just the base straightforward 
vanilla singleton pattern. So the things we need to make this thing work, very little that we actually need to make this thing work. We need arrays, and arrays are the simplest, fastest way to do this. I need an array of bools, and I use 125. I've never seen a reason to use anything other than a hard-coded value for this, and I'll need to, yeah, I'll need something for previous. Because the whole point of this is I could just go ahead and pull the keyboard. The SFML library is very simple. I just call it one function and just tells me, hey, get for this key is the is the key down right now. But the thing is, it's not very helpful for was it down a frame ago? And so did I just press it? Has it been held down? Is it up? What you know, is it just released? All of these things are problems because they could have written the code, but they never did. And so we have to go ahead and kind of take their API call and upgrade it just slightly. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the five functions. I'm just going to pop them in right here and just talk about it so we have time to, to think about this. And so I'll have to include, I can never remember, let me just pull, let me just go back and find the include. I think graphics will handle it just fine. There we go. Okay, so obviously is key up, is key pressed, is key down, is key released, and then this update. The update will be handled, even though it's public function, the update will be handled inside of the SFML game class. And so this means, I hope, what you think it might mean. There's four different states. I know it's hard to think four different states maybe for the keyboard, for any key on the keyboard, but right now, since my hand is, you know, like this kind of stuff, every key on my keyboard is up. It's in the up state. And so what happens is the moment I press it, that one game frame I press it, the key is in that pressed state, only for one frame. And then every frame after that, as I'm holding it down, it's in the down state. And then when I release it, for that brief moment I'm releasing it, it's in the is key released state, and then and then forevermore, every game after every frame after that, it will be in the up state. So it's just so basically up and down are like a more than one time type deal, but pressed and released is a, is very simply a one-time deal. It only gets triggered one time for every time you press the key, both down and up. And so I just have to supply the key, and this is a enumeration inside of the keyboard class. So you don't have to think, you don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to, you know, since it's an enumer enumeration, it's an integer, so there's no reason to send it by reference or send it by const reference or anything like that. You're just wasting your typing to make that work. And so the update function will do precisely what you expect it to do. So let's take a look at, let's do the update function first, or actually let's do the, yeah, the update function first, because this update function is, is my constructor. So coming back here, let me just, yeah, let me, let me pop these guys in. Okay, so there we go. They're over here now. But now the constructor, all it's going to do is just update. And you'll see in a second why it doesn't much matter because the first game frame is just going to get everything going. And for that first game frame, nothing's going to matter. It's just, it, it, you know, if there was a way you could actually possibly go in and fix things up in that first game frame, you, it would, you could ruin things potentially. But it takes at least a second or two for everything to kind of get going. So you're never going to notice something like that ever, ever happening. Okay, so we'll fix these guys up. These is key functions. Once we have one, we have them all. But the update function is pretty simple here. I'm, I wish there were again an API call where I could just get me, just get me the entire array of keys, the you know the bools of keys up and down. But there isn't, so I have to manually go through this. I is less than sf uh, keyboard, and there's a there's a key here or there's a there's a there's an attribute here called key count, which means how many keys are on my keyboard. And I can never remember what are we at 109. I don't really, I don't remember what it is, but uh, plus plus I. So I literally have to go in on an update. Like every time I want to go, hey, let's check the status of all the buttons. I literally have to go through every button and say, hey, the current at the I position, and save. Since yeah, let's just go ahead and look at this. Let's go to definition. And so you can see here is the enumeration. So it's like the enumeration, the values inside of here mean nothing to us. As long as we use the enumeration and always use the enumeration, it doesn't matter that B is a 1 and unknown is negative 1 and S is 10 or 20 or who cares. And, but almost every key, I think there are a couple keys that aren't in here. Don't know why, but you can see all the keys are part. All the keys that matter to us are part of that enumeration. So, so that's pretty cool. So I can say current equals and then here's my key. 
Let me make sure. Let me pull. Let me just steal the line of code so I don't have to type it all out. Then you can take a look at it. Let me just refill it in here. Oops. Let me make it so you can actually see it. There we go. So I say, okay, hey keyboard, is key pressed? Because there is no other. There is no other function. There's is key pressed, and that's it. I mean that. <laughs> that's it. I, like I can't believe. But whatever. I mean, it is what it is. So is the key pressed? That the press to us is a down state. To them, it's pressed. To us, it's down. And so, and I can, I, I need to take an integer and, and cast it into this key, blah, blah, blah. And I probably could make it a little more, I don't even know. I doubt this actually, this actually makes anything complicated when it comes to the amount of code it writes under the hood, you know, when it's translating into assembly language. But for every key from zero to key count, basically ask, hey, is that key down? And put it into a, the current stack. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? So the only thing I have to do here is just say, previous is equal to current because I have to maintain two frames. I have to maintain where was you know, was the key down last frame and is the key down now. And from that I can get all four of these states because it's just a matter of because there's you know two two you know, bool so two states for two separate frames there's four different ways that this, this thing can come up. And so you could imagine that's all we have to really do here. And once I wrote this, I'll just copy this the one time and then move everything around. And they say for the is key up, you just have to say, okay, was the is the current key what well, like up? Like a sec a moment ago it wasn't up, and now it's not up. So I have to come to the conclusion that the key is still up, or is, is currently up, and there wasn't a release in the last game frame. And so what is released then? If that's up released is a moment ago, a frame ago, it was down, like it, you know, it's the key was down, but now it's up. So in that brief moment, yep, boink, now it's in the state of being of being released. And so pressed is the same way, but opposite. If it wasn't, a, if it's not, oh shoot, oh shoot, did I do it reverse? Hold on, false, false. Is key release? I think I might have done it reverse. Your previous is true. Yeah, I, I mean, that's okay. So forgive me for that previous example. I'm not going to redo this. Don't have time to redo this at the current time. So is key released? I think I had. I thought I had current and previous reversed as well when I was staring and copy pasting. So if previously the key was down and currently the key is not down, then then it's been released. And so on the other the other way of doing things here, on the when it's pressed, it previously wasn't down and it currently is. Sorry about that. One more time. And then is key down is basically saying, was it before and now? So those are the four cases, right? False, false, true, 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 false, false, true. And so even if I did this wrong when I went to if I ever went to test this or something like that, it would be pretty you pretty quickly determine. Yep, I just reversed, oopsie, and now is the time to test this thing out rather than later on down the road, you know, and then either, either or then have to change it like a month from now, and then all the code that's been written on top of it might go wrong, and things like that. So this pretty much handles the entire, at least on the keyboard, the implementation side of this. On construction, we update just to get everything going. And then you're like, well, how do we update outside of the one time? Because this thing needs to be you know, maintained over and over and over again. So we can do that. I say, coming back here, I'll need to include this keyboard class. But all I have to do, since this thing is a singleton, is somewhere in here, inside what every game frame, every time we do an update. Not every single time we fly through a frame, every time we do, or I'm sorry, yeah, not a frame, but every time we cycle through this loop, because we're going over and over and over and over again, every so often we're like, okay, a 60th of a second has passed. Now it is time to actually update. Only when I actually do the update do I do, do I do the call to do the update one more time. And so get instance arrow update. This is where this goes. And as long as this is handled, because the run, this game loop is handling this over and over and over again, the update is automatically being called here, and it's automatically updating my entire, you know, my entire thing. That this keyboard, since it's a singleton, I can call this from anywhere. SFML keyboard colon colon get instance arrow 
get key up, get key down, get key pressed, get key released. And so I can use this anywhere, glo almost globally, because it's a singleton. And so, and then I'm guaranteed that I'm maintaining the correct status for every key on the keyboard. So I think that's pretty cool. It's just, it's just one line of code extra. And when you see when we get to the mouse class, at least in here, it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to put a mouse, see SFML mouse update to line of code. And the next part of this video then will cover exactly that, setting up that mouse class. So the mouse class is very similar. There's one extra function we have to write, but it's pretty much the same exact concept. You, pr you know, do you know you have five buttons on here? You got left, right, center, and then there's like an X1 and an X2, and other mice might have other buttons. I am not one of them fancy mice people. This is, I don't even, I do not use these buttons over here. So, just to say that this is all, you know, five buttons is what SFML can handle when it comes to the mouse, but it's again pretty much the same thing. So just for repetition's sake, fast forward if you. Now, if you haven't already started doing that, I am going to set up sfmlmouse.h and just get going on this class sfmlmouse. And same as before, public private. I guess I don't have to talk as much. I need a static sfmlmouse pointer, for instance. I need a private constructor. Yeah, I wonder why the IntelliSense didn't help me out last time. But anyway, and I need a static function that can return an SFML mouse pointer called get instance. All right, so that is again the static part of this, just to get that going. Yeah, why isn't it turning green? That's weird. Anyway, let's just get this thing going again, just like before. Let me. Yep, same as that. Move the CPP. Oh, that's not it. Move the the mouse CPP, get that going over here, so we can kind of get back to it. All right, oops, all righty, so then, uh, there we go, so then functions we need, I'm just going to drag them in here, just to save everybody the hassle, you're very familiar with them, it's the same deal whether it's a button or a mouse button, all right, so, so is button up, the only difference is they're called keys on the keyboard, they're kind of called buttons on the mice, so button, 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 up, down, pressed, released. And so uh, I'll need to include again. I'll oh, shoot that. Uh, oops. Oh shoot. Oh well. Let me find it real fast. Oop. Dot h. Dot h. Dot h. SFML. Blah blah blah. Okay. I get that. And so up, down, left, right for the specific mouse button. And the only difference here between this and that. Other than the fact that uh, when it comes to how many keys or how many buttons are we maintaining, this time around we're only maintaining the five I was just talking about. So we only need five rules you know, instead of the uh, current you know, 125 we're using for the keyboard. Okay, so let's see, outside of that, boom, 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 boom. That's pretty much it. And the only difference then is the get the mouse position. So like, you know, like you're going to need to know where the mouse is in the condition of where the render window is. So we can do this. We'll remember to, you know, I'm going to remove that because we can actually access uh, the change from last year's uh, version that I was doing is that one you needed to pass the window in and this one we can just get it from the mouse or from the game class. So, but yeah, get the mouse position. Where is the mouse in this window at the current time? Zero, zero is the upper left hand corner and then wherever the mouse may be is, and it'll return it as a vector of 2i. Remember that is just a that is just a vector of ints, and there's an x and a y coordinate. It's just it's a two-step dealy. 2i is a vector 2, which is a basically two-element array or two-element vector that has an x and a y component for the two elements. So coming back, okay, so let's see. I can create all these just like before. Just all right, put these, pop these guys in, and then you can imagine, I can just start copy pasting some of this stuff here. You can imagine then for the update, oh, I didn't do the constructor yet either, so for the update, okay, so mouse button, 
So this this only maintains the buttons, and this does not on a frame by frame basis ask, "Hey, where's the mouse? Hey, where's the mouse?" Only when you want to will it ask. So just like you see here, for every button, this is very, I mean, almost identical to the keyboard. For every button, set the previous equal to the current, so you remember what it was a moment ago, and then set it to whatever the new the new state condition is. And so the constructor for this will have to do the update call. Just like before. Okay, so come on and tell us that's good. Okay, so update is fixed. And so the deal is the same thing when it comes to up, down, and released and all that stuff. So let me just make sure here's my up. Just put the right code in here. Okay, now if let's say if the previously it was not down or previously is you know it is not in the down state and now it's not in the down state while well, the button is in currently in the up state and we discussed this a few times and I made a mistake in the last time around I reversed everything but it's just a matter then of the button is down if it was down a moment ago and it's still down now the, the button is pressed if it wasn't pressed previously, but now it is. And the button is just released if a moment ago it was, and now it's not. So those are my four states. True, true, false, false, false. Just making sure I put them all in the right condition. And so we'll do testing. But this is, you know, this is just pretty sure I've got it going. So got my constructor, got this, got that. So now the only thing left to do is to fill in this get mouse position. And you already have kind of forewarned that it's tricky, but it's not really that tricky. It's a one-liner, and so uh, get mouse position. Oops, let me just wait one second here. All right, so get mouse position is a one-liner. Get mouse, but get get position from the mouse uh, object. However, as you see here, I need to supply a window, and so to just make this a little easier just to kind of you know cohesion cup decoupling and all these ideas I'm just gonna go ahead and pull down SFML game and instead of getting passing the window every single time every single time every single time I can tie it in a little easier and just say hey game get me your instance and then get me your window but because this returns a pointer and if you saw it before this is not coming up right because the, you know, the argument list doesn't match. So get position, I'm sending in a render window pointer and it is expecting, oops, that's not what it, I was expecting to see here. Uh, get window, yeah, I was expecting to see that. Um, peak definition, it's, maybe that's not, where is it? Here, here it is, it's a reference. So it's a get position function that's needing a reference to a window instead of instead of a pointer. So to be able to do that, even, since I have a memory address, I can convert it from pointer to reference. Oh man, this language is fun sometimes. And so I don't have to worry about calling, you know, making this more complicated for anyone who would ever want to get the the, win, the mouse position, because theoretically, and you know, it's one of those until things prove otherwise, this game is only going to have one window for the game going on. It's only going to have one keyboard. It's only going to have one mouse. It's only going to have one game. And so that's where the idea, like the, all the singleton stuff, kind of comes in. It's like, well, if you're only going to have one. And yes, granted, if we go and change this idea later on, we're going to have some problems. We're going to have to refactor and redo a lot of stuff. But in all my years, I've never had to worry about that. But maybe there's a different part of gaming that I've never dealt with that you do have to worry. But that pretty much covers, yeah, this calls update. Oh, yeah, I, we have to go back into the game class. But let's see. Oh, get instance. Oh, that's a trick. Yeah. Oh, boy, return instance. So... Constructor calls update, get instance returns instance, get mouse position does all that fun like we talked about. We got four four uh, four button state functions, and then the update takes care of setting everything up. So then, just like I was mentioning a little bit ago, coming back to here, all I have to do now is also include SFML uh, mouse. And then wherever I do the keyboard, I also call the mouse at this right after. It doesn't matter which order, keyboard or mouse, they're all, 
They're not dependent on one another. And so at this point, I say this is we're gonna test it out next time around because I'm really I'm getting really bored with this circle class and I want to start I'm starting to itch to make objects that actually have sprites and things like that. So we'll actually test the mouse and the keyboard, but for the moment, as long as it doesn't crash, that's a big one, right? Uh-oh. And so far I do have an actual compiler error. Is key up in the keyboard. Okay, so let's see the keyboard.h. That's weird. Just the one? Let's see. Bool is key up. What? <laughs> I've never seen that error in my life. Oh, goodness. Ah, linker hell. Unresolved external symbol. Private static class. Mouse, mouse, instance. Oh! Uh, yeah, I have seen this in my life. I've been doing all of these things. I mean, you know, so you'll see this. Life's lessons learned, right? I have a static in my mouse class. Or even maybe in my keyboard class. Keyboard. Nope, that's up there. So, yeah, difference here. But at least right now in the keyboard class, my keyboard.h, I have a static pointer for my instance, I never define that. And so that's a big problem because you're like, oh, somewhere along the line I will in, I will initialize that thing somewhere and I never get around to it. Oops, I need the mouse that h. So then in the mouse that cpp at the top, just like it did for the keyboard, I can say I have a I have something called instance and it's going to be equal to null pointer to start. See, good thing I tested this thing and not just ran it out into the world, right? Okay, so let's try building one more time. All right, and that took care of that compiler warning for whatever reason. Right now I have no errors, no warnings, and again, if I run this, all right, how fast? Up, 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 up. Current previous equals current. I do have a problem with the mouse class. Not the keyboard class, though. Hmm, how many? Let's just run this and see one more time before I make a decision here. What is the button count? Let's see. How many? I don't know. One, or, okay, access thrown. Previous of i is equal to current of i. Why would that be different for the mouse versus the keyboard? Let's see, mouse.h again. There's my state of bool. There's my state of bool. Hmm. Let me just, just for the sake of trying something out, just to see if it crashes the same way. Exception, exception thrown, previous i equals current i. Mm -hmm. But the keyword worked fine, huh? Let's find this. Yeah, this one, this one worked fine. Previous is an array of whatever values. Okay, so boom. So okay, it worked for the keyboard, but now for the mouse. Previous is set to null. Everything unable to read memory. Even though I set up hmm. Let's take a look. Mouse.h versus keyboard.h. What am I doing differently? And it does I don't feel like I'm doing anything different at all. Current 15, boom, 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 boom. And then keyboard mouse constructor. Null pointer instance. Mouse mouse keyboard keyboard. And update. Get instance. Oh. Yeah, I, I, in all of my haste, right? You guys are probably screaming out for this for about half an hour. Oh well, it happens, right? So that should cover it. My get instance function needed to make sure I took into account the first time I called it. So oh boy, embarrassing. It's only ten thirty. Usually these errors come at two three in the morning. So now it should at least run, and it does. There's my 
there's my circle. I got rid of the code that draws the dots out, but my code, it's flashing, so my game's running at 60 frames per second. And uh, I say minus the testing, and at this point, ooh, I need to test this a little bit, right? Since uh, I'm a little shaky just getting the thing going, but I feel like once I get the thing going, I'm, everything is there, but who knows, right? I'm 99% sure maybe you already found something, but if there is something with between the keys and the mice and everything else, we'll find it next time around. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, look forward to part seven coming soon. Take care. Bye.